Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to the April 9th edition of Emmanuel Church Rio Rico's online virtual worship for April 9th, 2023. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we welcome you here. We celebrate your resurrection. Lord, death and hell have no power over you. They cannot hold you down or hold you back. And Lord, with your resurrection, you bring us the promise of resurrected life as well. Thank you, Lord, for your great love. Thank you for your great mercy. Lord, be with those that lie heavy on our heart, who are suffering, who are dealing with problems many of us can't even imagine. Bless them, Lord, and use us to bless others. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Today's uh, message is is a different title than you probably would expect. Why the women? But the fact is, the women in Jesus' life play a very important role in the message of the resurrection, as well as his crucifixion. There are significant things that really only happen to the female disciples of Jesus. And I I want to take a look at that today. Why the women? Why were they so important in the truth of the resurrection being made known? Well, first of all, true devotion serves. Starting in Luke 23, verse 55, and reading to Luke 24, verse 3, we see the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph, this is Joseph of Arimathea, and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Now, if you'll recall, when Jesus was crucified, Joseph of Arimathea asked for his body and then took it and laid it in a tomb that had never been used. But there wasn't much time to prepare it. It was wrapped, uh, but that's about all they had time for. And the women saw it. So taking up verse 56, then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. Now, Jewish preparation for burial did not really so much involve preserving the body as it did just preventing the body from being unpleasant. Uh, Even in uh, this time of year, uh, which is very similar in Israel to what we find here in um, southern Arizona, while the nights are cold, the days can start to get fairly warm and the body decays even faster. Now, Jesus' body was laid in in a stone more or less a cave, if you will. And consequently, it's probably cooler in there than outside. His body would not have decayed quite as quickly, but they wanted to do the things that one did for the body of one that that is loved, to make sure it was clean, to make sure the spices and the, the ointments and the perfumes were applied to prevent it from from the horrible smell of decay and rot. Uh, they weren't going to try and stop the rot, but they, they didn't want it to, to be so unpleasant. So they got everything ready, but the next day was the Sabbath. And because they were still faithful Jews, even though they were followers of Jesus as Messiah, they still were following the Jewish laws. So they rested on the Sabbath day. But on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. So what is going on here is these are people who are devoted to Jesus, and their desire is to continue serving him even though they believe that he is dead and gone. They did not expect to find him resurrected. They expected to find his body in the tomb where they saw it laid to rest. And so 
their faithfulness, their devotion, their servants' hearts are showing here. It is significant to note that it's only the women who come. The apostles are in hiding in the upper room. They are afraid that they will be arrested and, and I was going to say prosecuted, but frankly persecuted, even as Jesus was. The women, however, in their devotion, in their love, in their loyalty, want to continue serving their Lord. And so they do what they can, which is to go and try and prepare his body for a proper burial. True devotion serves, whatever the cost might be. Next, seek and you will find. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again? Then they remembered his words. They are seeking the Lord. And what they find is he's not where they're looking for him. Why? Because they're looking for him in a tomb, a place for a dead body to be. But the angels, and of course these men in glowing white, must be messengers of God. And the word angel translates simply as messenger. That's really what the word angel means. But these are godly messengers and are likely the spiritual beings that we think of when we think of angels. And so they actually correct the women. You're looking for a living person where dead people should be. He's not going to be here. He's risen. Don't you remember what he told you? And, and they then tell them, the women, exactly what Jesus had already said. And they remembered. And they didn't just remember. They understand now. So they sought the Lord. And while they expected to find one thing, they found something different. But ultimately... It was what they truly were looking for. We need to be looking for Jesus. And if he's not where we expect him, then we need to be look where he must be expected to be. Not dead? Then look for him among the living. And we must look for him among the living as well, not among the dead. The tomb is empty. There is no body there. There are many religious leaders around the world. Most of them, their tombs can be found and their bodies can be found in their tombs. We do not know exactly which is the garden tomb, the tomb Joseph of Arimathea used, but we know if we did find it, Jesus' body would not be there. He is risen. Seek and we will find him. Finally, the women believed. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven. Remember eleven, because Judas has already hanged himself. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. Now, these women believed both in what Jesus had told them and in what their eyes told them. They, they did what they thought they ought to do. They went to tell the apostles, those who had been sent by the Lord to tell the whole world about who he was. And yet, the apostles in this case were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women who went with them. These were the ones who delivered the truth of the resurrection 
to the apostles who refused to believe them. You see, those who were closest to Jesus, those who spent every day with him, those who had seen him raise the dead, don't forget, the widow of Nain's son, the centurion's daughter, uh, Lazarus, they had seen Jesus raise these from the dead. Uh, Peter's mother-in-law, even. They'd seen these things, but they didn't believe it. Why? Because it was the women telling them. But you see, the women were the ones who got it right. They had faith. Even Peter, when he went to check, had a little bit of doubt that maybe Jesus wasn't dead. He bent over and saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And instead of believing, he went away wondering to himself what had happened. You see, the empty tomb in and of itself is not the absolute proof that Jesus has risen. And yet for these women, told by angelic messengers, told by Jesus before his crucifixion, they recalled and they believed. Why are the women mentioned so prominently in the story of the resurrection? Because they were the first to believe and they were the first to tell others that Jesus had risen from the dead. When we look at the story of the crucifixion and burial and resurrection of Jesus, we must give these women the credit that they deserve. Because remember, these were the ones that God chose to first deliver the message of the risen Christ. The very first one. Why? Because of their faithfulness, because of their devotion, because of their willingness to serve even in the face of possible arrest and danger, they still did what was right. They still looked for Christ. And when they didn't see him, behold, they found him in their faith. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we love you and praise you and bless your holy name. And Lord, we pray that you would show us yourself alive, victorious over death, and coming back for us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace.